Last week, as you recall, we left Professor Robinson and Dr. Smith searching for a lost laser pistol. Unaware, the professor would, within moments, be plunged into an incredible encounter with a deadly alien spirit. Yes. There it is on the floor of the cave. Well, for two buttons and an old shoestring, I'd make you climb down there and get it. Oh, you wouldn't. You know that I have a phobia about heights. I get extremely dizzy. Losing the pistol was an accident. You have only to ask Will. I did. He said you heard this sound, drew your laser, and then a small lizard appeared. You screamed, dropped the pistol, and ran. You have your facts completely all right, sir. In the first place, the lizard was not small. It was huge. In the second place, I did not drop my pistol. The reptile flung it from my grasp. And in the third place, I did not scream and run. I made a calm, orderly retreat. Knowing your unquestioned bravery in the past, I can believe that. All right, I'll get the laser. All you've got to do is hold on to the rope. Yes, yes, I can do that. Never fear, Smith is here. You're in good hands. All right, now pay it out slowly. Yes, I can do that. Careful. All right, slow.
this is the second time this week I've had to recharge your power pack. You sure are using a lot of energy. It is Dr. Smith's fault. He is constantly talking to me. Well, you don't have to reply. If Judy's right, all you have to do is tune him out by shutting off your audio unit. Help! 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 Major, a dreadful calamity has befallen us. One moment everything is safe and sound, and the next, no, 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 the whole cave starts to shake. I barely escaped with my life. But it's not my fault. There's nothing I could have done to help Professor Robinson. Something's happened to Dad? Yes, yes! Smith, take a hold of yourself. Now, what's this all about? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You'd better answer me. We've lost Professor Robinson. Sealed up in a dark catacomb. I don't believe it. Oh, William, William, it's the sad truth. Father's all right. I'm sure he is. I'm going to go tell Mother what's happened. And get some lights. We'll start digging right away. I also will assist. Uh, Smith! <laughs> you get some picks and shovels. Will and I will get the rest of the equipment we need. Major, my recent experience has exhausted me. My delicate back will you simply not say... what I said. Move! <laughs> ah, out of my way, you minute! You are strong. But even the strength of a hundred men could not move that rock. Who said that? Your strength will serve me well. for you a long time. Who are you? Once I was a great warrior and leader of my race, but that was many centuries ago. What is it you want with me? My body has long ago been used up. I want yours as a replacement. You have all the qualities which I need. There is no escape. <laughs> and sleep and while you sleep I will take over your body oh. oh enough enough I've reached the end of my endurance I'll take over your shovel if you want oh. to Doctor. well you won't Penny if the rest of us can keep going so can you Smith you're a cold cruel man Major Penny do you want some of this Thanks, Mum. Judy, have some more. Dear lady, dear lady, nothing would give me greater joy than to free your husband. But we've been working for hours. The spirit is willing, but my flesh has grown weak. Well, perhaps you're right, Dr. Smith. We could probably all do with a few minutes' rest. I'm not tired, Mother. We could save a lot of time if we could blast our way through into that cave. Excellent idea, Major. It would save hours of back-breaking labor. I advise against such a course. An explosive might cause further damage in the interior of the cave. I suppose he's right. Be still, you nondescript ninny. According to my computations, 
The chariot light batteries only have a few more minutes of power. I suggest that everyone return to the spaceship and resume work in the morning. We can't do that. What about Dad? My sensors tell me that there is plenty of oxygen in the cave. Professor Robinson is in no danger from that source. Splendid. A good night's sleep for us all, and we can attack this barrier with renewed energy. For well, once I agree with Smith, Marine. You can go back to the spaceship. I can't leave here. I want to stay, too. I can work in the dark. We'll get your father out safe and sound, Will. Don't worry. There's nothing more we can do now. Oh, please, Mom, let me stay, too. I can work just as long as Will can. No, Don's right. We can't work in the dark. And I'm not going to let you two children stay up all night. But, Mom... Mother, are you sure he'll be all right? Yes, Judy. Right. That's right, Will. All right. But I'm coming back first thing in the morning. Awake, John Robinson. It is time you return to your family. is blocked. I can't get out. I have removed the obstructions. Go. But remember, I am now a part of you. No. I won't let you. There is nothing you can do. And every time you sleep, I will gain further control of your mind. You are not to remember anything that has happened here. Now go and take good care of our body. It feels as if a mule kicked it. Stone must have hit me. Just for hours. I wonder what happened to Smith. Say something optimistic, Maureen. Please don't. I don't think I could stand it. I know what you mean. Don, I think we should go back there now. Dad! It's a disaster area. Ugh. Salad, nothing but dreary green salad. I'm literally famished. Carrots for breakfast. Suitable for Bugs Bunny, perhaps, but hardly adequate fare for a gourmet like me. The others are eating breakfast. Why do you not join them? Because, my inquisitive friend, I do not wish Professor Robinson to question me about yesterday's unfortunate accident. There are some things worse than hunger, I suppose. Now, what was I saying? You were referring to yesterday's unfortunate accident. Ah, yes. Despite the fact that I am completely without blame, Professor Robinson might just possibly bear some 
small resentment toward me. I had to turn the rope loose, you know. Otherwise, I would have been trapped in the cave myself. In other words, you chickened out on him. How dare you! I'd like to report... That is not true. He who chickens and runs away will chicken out another day. Silence, you malicious moron. Just one more word out of you and I will... Dr. Smith, Dad wants you. Well, uh, uh, tell him I'm busy working in the garden. I shall talk to him later. He said now. A moment of truth has arrived. Be still, you bubble-headed booby. Very well. Lead on. Before we go any further, Professor, I should like to state that I did everything in my power to help you yesterday. Well, of course you did. Then you're not angry at me? Certainly not. Have some breakfast. Why, thank you. As a matter of fact, I am a bit hungry today. I'll just have a... Don't touch that food. But you just said that... You're not going to eat any food from this table today. And if you don't join us tomorrow on time for breakfast, you're not going to eat for another 24 hours, Dr. Smith. Is that understood? Aren't you being a little unreasonable? This is Dr. no concern of yours, Maureen. Take it easy, John. Are you sure you're feeling all right? I feel perfectly fine. Just because I expect a little discipline, a little routine from that man, does not mean that I am sick. John, please. John. I'm... I'm sorry. Please forgive me, all of you. It's this headache. I just can't seem to get rid of it. Look, dear, I, don't you think you'd better rest? I think you need some sleep. Yes, I think I'd better go lie down. I hope you don't take what I said seriously, Dr. Smith. Oh, not at all, sir. We all have occasional outbursts of ill temper. Right, won't he, Don? <laughs> sure, Penny. He'll be as fit as a fiddle in the morning. Unfortunately, Major, I cannot agree with you. Professor Robinson is an extremely sick man. What do you think's wrong with him, Dr. Smith? The symptoms are unmistakable, Will. His responsibilities have become too much for him. I've been expecting this for quite a while now. Expecting what, Dr. Smith? I regret to say that Professor Robinson is undergoing a complete mental breakdown. If anyone's flipping his lid around here, Smith, it's you. John Robinson happens to be the sanest man I've ever met. Indeed, Major. I will not argue the point with you. Just remember, there is a limit to what the mind can stand. For once I agree with you, there is a limit, and I've just reached it. Who is it? Can I talk to you, Dad? Sure. Come in, son. I made a prize idiot out of myself, didn't I? No, you didn't, sir. Everyone understood. You're a good boy, Will. In many ways, you're a better son than I am a father. I think it's the other way around. Instead of being lost out here in space, you should be leading the life of a normal boy, playing with youngsters your own age, going to ball games, doing all the things a boy needs to do before growing up. I like what I'm doing better. You're saying that only because you don't know what you've missed. should have insisted that you remain on Earth. And the girls, too. There's so much that they haven't experienced. So much. Dad? No. 
Robinson. I am already deep in your mind. I cannot be dislodged. Go away. Leave me alone. Why do you fight me, Professor Robinson? You expend your strength foolishly. I'll never give in to you. You hear? Never. Cease talking. Listen. I am going to leave this planet. Or should I say we are going to leave? To accomplish our purpose, we will need a spaceship. The Jupiter too. It has no power thrust. It lacks fuel. It needs repairs. Small matters which can be easily taken care of. With my help, of course. I will instruct you as to what must be done. Do you understand? Yes. I understand. Good. Now sleep. When you wake, there will be much to do. Hello, Will. Hi. If you have a problem, I'll be glad to help solve it for you. There's nothing you can do. You are concerned about your father. Is that not so? Yeah. Professor Robinson is strong. His recuperative powers are excellent. There is no need to worry. Oh, I know. It's just that Dad's always so healthy. I'm seeing him in bed. The rest will do him good. I don't agree. Professor Robinson's problem is not physical, it's mental. Loafing in bed won't help him. But it can't hurt him. Spare me your useless medical advice, Dr. Dunderhead. Well, Dad was all right before the cave-in, Dr. Smith. Ah, but was he? That is the important question. Who knows what deep-seated problems lay waiting in his subconscious like tigers ready to spring at the first sign of weakness? Golly, do you really think so? He displays all the symptoms of a classic case of a disturbed individual. Baloney. Silence, or I'll divide your computers and turn you into a split personality. Go on, Dr. Smith. Your father's problem must be rooted out and exposed to the fresh air of reason. Then a cure will be effected. I sure wish there were something we could do. There is. With my extensive practice in the field of psychiatry, I could easily restore your father to perfect mental health. Well, I don't know, Dr. Smith, if you're not really qualified. Now, what do you suppose the title doctor before my name implies? Of course I'm qualified. However, if you prefer to have your father suffer... No, I'm sorry if I insulted you, Dr. Smith. If you can help Dad, I'm all for it. Very well. I shall undertake to start working on my patient at the earliest opportunity. May I speak? You have my permission. In my opinion... It is not Professor Robinson who needs psychiatric treatment. It is his doctor. Just you wait, you deplorable dummy. Oh, Dad's awake. Good. How's the headache? Gone and forgotten. I feel fine now. Oh, thank goodness. You really had me worried. I said I feel fine. Now let's drop the subject. Why? <laughs> Certainly, dear. I hope you're real hungry. We're going to have a wonderful dinner. And... We can discuss food later. Right now I have something much more important to talk about. We're getting the Jupiter 2 back into space. I've devised the machine to make fuel. We can synthesize all the deuteronium we need. Fantastic. But it will work. I didn't say it wouldn't, but... But where did you get this information? It's years ahead of anything we know. What difference does it make? Just so we can get off this planet. I couldn't be happier. 
I'm just curious as to why you never told me about this method of manufacturing fuel before. Since when is it necessary that I discuss everything with you, Major West? You seem to forget who's in command here. It is I who give the orders. Your job is to obey them. Sure, John. You're running the show. Whatever you say, that's fine with me. Now, from now on, things are going to be different around this camp. I have worked out a flight schedule. It calls for our leaving this planet within one week. In order to attain that goal, we're going to have to work day and night. Well, why, why the sudden rush? Another day or two won't make any difference. Because I want it that way, Maureen. Any objections, Maureen? No, John. Has anyone else any comment? When do we start manufacturing the fuel? Right after dinner. Have someone bring me my dinner. I'll be eating in the lab tonight. Oh, dear. I didn't know it was so late. Do you know it's after two o'clock? Oh, indeed I do. Every muscle in my body knows it. Your husband, madam, has turned into a tyrant. Ah, at least he let Will and Penny go to bed at their normal time. Yeah, but he wasn't too happy about it. He sure is in a rush to get that fuel machine built. But it cannot be done in one night. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to realize that. Have any of you noticed John's eyes? They seem to look right through you. Indeed, I have noticed. I do believe there is cause for alarm. One thing that bothers me is you never know what to expect. One moment he seems perfectly all right, and the next, pow, he's like someone you've never met before. Even I can't talk to him. He just walks away. I know. I grabbed him by the arm, and he gets so angry he almost hit me. We're obviously dealing with a very disturbed man, Major... He cannot be reached by the usual methods of reasoning. You know, Dr. Smith, I never thought I'd hear myself saying this, but I'm even willing to take a suggestion from you. And high time, too. Let me handle the professor. Possibly you're unaware that I'm completely familiar with the latest techniques in the field of psychiatry. As a doctor or a patient? Spare me your insulting barbs, Major, or I shall withdraw my offer of help. Dr. Smith, Don was only joking. I'm sure we'd all be most grateful for any help you could give us. For the sake of the children and you, madam, I shall take the case. Possibly, <laughs> Professor Robinson is still awake. I might as well start the treatment immediately. Good luck, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Judy. I shall do the best I can. <laughs> Dr. Zachary Smith, the angel of mercy, rises to the occasion. Quite often, a quiet talk with a friend has great therapeutic value. I have no friends. Oh, but you have, and I am one of them. Now, why don't you just put down your work and relax? There. Excellent. Can't you just feel the tensions and frustrations of the busy day melting away? All I feel is boredom. Possibly you don't realize it, but you haven't been yourself lately. Your attitude has been overbearing, hostile, and quite unpleasant. Obviously, you're having a little, shall we say, mental trouble. Now, why don't you just tell the old doctor all about it? Dr. Smith? <laughs> yes. You're a fool. 
beg your pardon. I said you were a fool. <laughs> Who said that? I did, Dr. Smith. Who are you? I will tell you. My name is Kanto. I'm a great leader and warrior from the planet Questy. Is there anything else you would like to know, Dr. Smith? No. No, no I'm perfectly satisfied. Stay where you are. No one said you could leave. You are not to mention what you have learned in this room to anyone. Do you understand? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. It would be wise to remember what I have said. If you do not, I will be forced to destroy you. No! If I tell the others what's happening, the alien will destroy me. And if I don't... Did you address me, Dr. Smith? No. No, I was talking to myself. A most disturbing habit. It tells me you have a problem. Would you like to discuss it with me? A fat lot of good you could do. You are mistaken. I already know a great deal. I, too, know what is wrong with Professor Robinson. Quiet. I don't want to hear another word out of you. Let him talk, Dr. Smith. If he knows what's wrong with Dad, maybe we can find a cure. There's nothing to cure. Your father's condition was only temporary. He's well on the way to recovery. That is not true. The professor has grown worse. One more word out of you and I'll remove your power back. Let him talk, Dr. Smith. I want to hear what he has to say. Well, I do not. I refuse to get involved. We're almost finished. Tomorrow we should be able to start manufacturing fuel. Oh, Don. You know, I always thought that I would be overjoyed at the thought of leaving this planet. But I'd be willing to stay forever if it would help John return to normal. Dr. Smith said Dad is getting better. But I haven't noticed any improvement. Neither have I. If anything, he's worse. Mom? The robot has something to tell us. What is it? I have computed Professor Robinson's condition and have arrived at certain conclusions. He is not mentally or physically ill. He isn't? Well, then what's wrong with him? He is possessed. Possessed by an alien spirit. But how? Why? My source of information is limited. You're holding back something. I order you to tell us. Very well. But it will distress you. We want to hear it. The alien spirit has not yet gained full control of Professor Robinson. But time grows short. Unless some remedy is found, he will be completely taken over and lost forever. I am sorry. Oh, Don. What are we going to do? I wish I knew. The mechanical man has told them what is happening. That could be very unfortunate. There's nothing they can do to stop us now. Perhaps. Still, they could be a hindrance. Then we must remove them. <laughs> we are beginning to think more and more alike.
spying on me? Answer me. You're spying. No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I mean, I didn't mean any harm, really, I didn't, sir. Does anyone else know about this? If you're lying... No, sir, it's the truth, really, Dad. for me to take over completely. Yes, I know. I'm willing. Fine, we're right on schedule. Have either of you seen John? I come to think of it, I haven't. Isn't he in the lab? No. He's not anywhere in the spaceship. I've looked everywhere. Dad just wouldn't have wandered off. I think I know where we can find him. The place where all this started. That cave. I'll go in first and look around. Give me the flashlight. I'm going in with you. So am I. I don't think it's a good idea. There's no telling what we might find in there. We're going with you. All right. What is it you want here? Dad! Where did you get those clothes? Oh, John, I'm so glad we found you. You are both mistaken. I am not John Robinson. Sure you are, fella. Come on, we're going back to the Jupiter, too. Stay where you are. Now, is that any way to treat an old friend? I warn you. Do not take another step closer. Come on, buddy, you don't need that. Stay back! Something terrible has happened to a Marine. We have to get that weapon away from him. Be very careful. John? each other for years. Major West. Dad, please. You've got to remember. And you remember Penny and Will and Dr. Smith. Oh, try. Try to remember. John Robinson. 
Only his body. My name is Kanto. John, please. Stay back. John, please, let me take you back to the spaceship. Get away from me. What are you going to do? You present a danger to me. I must see to it that you're out of the way. Open that door and let us out of here. I don't take orders, I give them. You shall remain here while I complete plans on your spaceship. You can't leave us trapped in here. Mrs. Robinson, do not worry about your children. When I leave this planet, they'll go with me. No, you can't. Everyone will be needed to run the spaceship. Maureen, there's no use in trying to reason with them. Let's go. <laughs> Foolish Earthman. I have destroyed armies. When you dare to pit your puny strength against me. <laughs> Consider yourself fortunate. I'm usually not so lenient with my enemies. I've spent many centuries in this cave. Perhaps you will enjoy it. It's getting late. Just know something bad has happened to them, Will. Do you think we should start looking for them? Don't know. I suppose they came back while we were gone. Here we are, children. I prepared a nice little bedtime snack for you. None for me, Dr. Smith. Me either. Now look here, my dear young friends. You eat hardly anything at dinner. They are worried. They are not concerned with food. I don't recall having asked for your advice. I'm just as worried as you are. But starving yourselves won't help matters. We're just not hungry, Dr. Smith. Very well. Then you'd better get ready for bed. Oh, couldn't we stay up just a little longer, Dr. Smith? In the hope that the others will return. You may not stay up. When your parents are away, I am responsible for you, and I will simply not tolerate two sleepy, worn-out children on my hands. Off you go. All right, but, but will you promise to wake us up when they get back? Of course I will. Off with you. Good night, Dr. Smith. Good night. Good night, Penny. Good night, Will. Remember, brush your teeth. Thank you, little mother. I'll be down in a few moments. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Poor, dear children. Alone on this cold, cruel planet. We'll have to be extremely kind to them until the pain of their loss lessens. Pain? Loss? Surely you don't have to believe that Mrs. Robinson or any of the others will ever return. I cannot answer that question. As for the professor, we can forget about him, too. I cannot forget. They are all in my memory banks. But they'll be all right. I'll take very good care of them. Dr. Smith, the father. Yes. 
Dr. Smith, the mother. Yes. It does not compute. It does not compute. It does not. Oh, shut up. It does not compute. It does. Ah! That should stop your cackling. Ah, there you are. I prepared a nice hot breakfast for you. I know you'll enjoy it. We'll eat later if you don't mind, Dr. Smith. We want to start looking for Mom and Dad and the others. I do mind. You're not stepping one step out of this camp without eating your breakfast. But we're wasting time. Dr. Smith is right. You must have nourishment. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that for once you agree with me. It is one of the few times you are more often wrong. Spare me your philosophical comments, you blithering bumpkin. I also agree with Dr. Smith. Come no closer or I will destroy. There is no danger. I am a friend. Who are you? My name is Kanto. I am here to help you. In what way, may I ask? I have information about the rest of your party. Where are they? Can you take us to them? Sit down and eat, and I'll tell you what I know. Your parents, your sister, and Major West are unfortunately no longer on this planet. Oh, no! Oh, dear. They've been taken away in a spaceship to the planet, Quasti. How do you know that? Because I was a member of the aliens who took them. I did not approve of what my friends were doing. As a result, they left me here. In all honesty, I must tell you, I'm not here out of unselfish motives. My friends betrayed me. I seek vengeance, and you can help me attain it. We'll do everything we can, sir. But how? You have a spaceship. It is nearly ready for flight. We can take it and go to the planet Quasti. There, my friends will assist in freeing your parents. We can be of mutual benefit to each other. I don't believe a word he said. I think he's lying. William! We didn't see any other aliens or their spaceship. And what about Dad? Why was he acting so strange? That was the work of my former friends. You've got an answer for everything, haven't you? Well, the rest can go with you, but not in me. The boy is overwrought, sir. Please forgive him. The strain of losing his parents. You do understand? Of course. Shall we cooperate with each other? By all means, sir. Then let's begin preparations for our departure. Oh, yes. Yes, at once, sir. looking for you. So now you found me. So what? My sensory units tell me you are very unhappy. Is there anything I can do? Tell me about the alien. I have not yet been able to make any computations regarding him. There is a barrier. It's not your fault. Like yourself, I too miss the rest of the family. Alert! Alert! The others are getting the spaceship ready for departure. Why aren't you helping them? Answer me. The others can go with you, but not me. No, sir, I'm staying right here. If Will does not go, I too will remain. Well, it seems that I have a rebellion on my hands. When Penny and Dr. Smith learn what we intend to do, they will stay here also. You're being very foolish, Will Robinson. If I prove to you that everything I said was true, would you go with me then? Sure. But you're lying again. I know it. You judge me wrongly, Will Robinson. If you come with me, I will show you how wrong you are. All right, show me. 
Shall I accompany you? Stay here. You have work to do. Do as he says. I shall wait for you to return. Come. seen this place before? No. Go ahead. I have something to show you. down to the very core of this planet. I know why you brought me here. Do you? You're going to push me off, aren't you? Yes, Will Robinson. I am. You're going to push me off, aren't you? Yes, Will Robinson. I am. And I know why you're wearing that mask, too. So we won't know that you've taken over my father's body. You're a very bright young man. It's regrettable that you must be destroyed. But it must be done. Would you do something for me first? Would you take off your mask? I want to see my father's face one last time. Very well. Goodbye, Dad. I love you. What did you say? I love you, Dad. Why do you hesitate? Push him off. No. I order you to obey. No, it's not. It's not right. Push him off. I command you. Don't listen to him, Dad. We all love you. You cannot disobey me. Do as I say. Nothing stronger than the feeling we have. Listen to me! Listen to me! Listen! 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 This universe, there is nothing stronger. this disturbance, but I do know one thing. It's happening in a depth that could crack the core of this planet and lay it wide open. Don, come in, Don! Right here, John. Listen, that last batch of detronium fuel tested out just fine. I think we've finally got all we need. Well, that's good news. How about the earthquake? Give you any trouble? Earthquake? What earthquake? Uh, 
Uh, we got it here, but good. And deeper than anything we ever had before. You better pack your gear and get back here right away. The next one we're hitting your area. We'll start right back. Judy, get Will and Smith. I'll start loading the equipment. In the presence of appreciative colleagues and fellow voyagers, I now unveil... Will, Dr. Smith, we're leaving. Shh! Dad just called. He said there might be an earthquake right here in this very area. Am I or am I not going to receive the reverence this ceremony deserves? You've got it, Dr. Smith. As I was saying, William, you too. I now unveil this noble monument, a temple of immortality to the living and imperishable memory of Dr. Zachary Smith. I name thee Spirit of Space. It doesn't even look like you. It is the abstract, artistic concept of my inner self. Now can we leave? My dear boy, have you no regard for the sanctity of this moment? We've got to get out of here. Didn't you hear what Judy said? We might be right in the middle of a... <laughs>